Over the last few years, cattle producers in the West Midlands have been reporting problems with pregnancy toxemia or ketosis in the cow herd. We'd like to use this presentation to discuss some of the causes of ketosis and to discuss some of the strategies that cattle producers can to adopt to reduce this problem. Cows have a high energy requirement in late pregnancy and early lactation. When the energy requirement has not been met by the nutrient intake, the cows start to break down their own body reserves to meet the deficit. If the rate of breakdown of the fat is too fast, then toxic waste from the breakdown process accumulate and cause the signs associated with ketosis, which the cows get disorientated, they stop eating, they, they might go down and um, gradually go into a coma and die if treatment is not begun early. Cows with damaged livers or reduced appetite are more susceptible to ketosis. There are two fairly common pasture plants in the West Midlands which can cause liver damage. The pasture legume blue lupins, when it is affected by the fungal toxin from Opsin, and the pasture species are Patterson's curse. Fortunately, the cause of the liver damage can be diagnosed by post-mortem and laboratory testing. In 2011, there were eight cases of chronic liver damage submitted to the Animal Health Laboratories in South Perth. These were differentiated into four cases being contributed to Patterson's curse poisoning, two cases diagnosed as lupinosis, one case where both Patterson's curse and lupinosis were associated with the chronic liver damage, and, and a single case of saponin toxicity in some younger cattle. The mortality in the herds affected with ketosis that were submitted to the laboratory ranged from one to two percent. Um, and, and most of the cases were in cows of more than four years of age. The good news is that the liver is one organ that is able to regenerate. For example, if half the liver is removed in a healthy animal, the animal will have full liver functional capacity within a month. After an acute case of liver damage, where the cause is identified and removed early, the cattle have a good chance of having full liver functional capacity in six to 12 months. However, if the liver is being continually exposed to a liver toxin, this results in the accumulative damage to the liver and an inability to recover. Pasture weed Patterson's Curse contains a toxic compound, pyrrolizidine alkaloid. This is present in all parts of plant, including the stem and the leaf and the flowers, and it's present in the green material and in dry material, including baled hay. The toxicity increases at flowering and when the plant is stressed. After spraying, the palatability of the plant increases and also increases the incidence of poisoning. The pyrrolizidine alkaloid damages the liver cells, it damages the DNA of the liver cell, and it can damage the blood supply to the liver cells. The extent of this liver damage and the fact that the plant is toxic year round makes it hard for the liver to regenerate when cattle are grazing pastures containing Patterson's curse for extended periods. Blue lupins are a useful feed source and fix atmospheric nitrogen. However, after summer rain, they may develop a fungal toxin, Phomopsis, on the stem and cause a disease known as lupinosis. Sheep are more susceptible to lupinosis than cattle. However, the sheep livers recover more rapidly than cattle livers. The Phomopsis toxin affects the liver cells and it also suppresses appetite. In late pregnancy, cattle with a reduced appetite are more susceptible to ketosis. When cattle are grazing blue lupins and have chronic liver damage associated with lupinosis, they may not be clinically affected, but they probably will be a little bit ill thrifty and fail to gain weight. The livers can remain cirrhotic for a long period of time. However, they are generally fully functional within 12 months. When sheep have been affected by lupinosis, once they've recovered and start to eat again, those sheep that have got to this stage will normally regenerate quite well within six months. The 
best way of preventing ketosis in cows is to provide them a good source of energy in late pregnancy and early lactation. Green pastures with at least two tonnes of feed on offer provide sufficient energy. If the pastures don't have that, this much feed, it's important to provide a good quality energy supplement. This might be a high energy grain or a very good quality hay. If you know that your cows have some liver damage or you suspect they might have from previous exposure to lupins or Patterson's curse, then it is a good idea not to use a high protein supplement such as lupins. Also, in late pregnancy, it's important not to graze pastures containing old blue lupin stalks uh, because if they do get some lupinosis at this stage of pregnancy, their appetite will be reduced and they, won't, um, they are more likely to go into ketosis. If there are some old blue lupin stalks in the paddock, um, the alternative is to provide a really good, high quality roughage so that they don't eat the stalks. It is most important that if producers have Patterson's curse in their pastures, they aim to control it. The plant is a weed and doesn't provide any value to, to the pasture. Blue lupins, on the other hand, provide a good feed source they put nitrogen back into the soil and blue lupins can be grazed strategically to avoid limber damage. The sort of strategies that you can adopt is to remove cattle from blue lupin paddocks after summer rain. The cattle are more likely to eat the stalks after, after summer rain when they're wet and the other dry feed is also wet. Um, but gradually over summer with, with incidents of summer rain, the amount of famoxin toxin on the stalk will increase. Also remember that when you're feeding cattle in a blue lupin paddock it's important that there is an alternative roughage source so they aren't tempted to eat the blue lupin stalks. Cattle producers with a current ketosis problem in their cow herd associated with chronic liver damage may wish to adopt a culling strategy to reduce the problem. What you could do is prior to joining you could bring the cow herd in and draft off the bottom 10 to 20 percent of the herd and then do a blood test on these cows to assess the liver functioning capacity. Or, because most of the cases that we're seeing of ketosis are in cows of more than four years of age, you may re wish to reduce the age at which you cull your cow herd. Adopting one of these culling strategies in combination with controlling Patterson's curse on the property and strategically grazing blue lupins should reduce the problem of ketosis in your herd.